what I hope to be able to convey here is that this concept will be able to help reduce a lot of that, um, that craziness and allow you to reduce the complexity within the organization uh, across the whole enterprise. So we'll talk about, we'll just introduce the concept, we'll talk about reasons to harmonize, uh, challenges to harmonization, elements of a harmonization slash standardization effort, and I'll actually compare and contrast the two. Some technology enablers as well as benefits of harmonization. So what is, what is harmonization? Um, before I get into the slide, I just want to kind of describe the concept for a second. The, the concept of standardization, if you're implementing any system in your organization, especially if it's a large organization, um, oftentimes you're forced to standardize your implementation. In other words, you're forcing users to use the same form for the same things, and there's oftentimes a conflict between the corporate group that's doing the implementation and the locations that are the consumers of the process because of the fact that they might have nuances of differences between what they do in this division or this division or this location. So what happens in a standardization effort oftentimes is that you either have a form that has a huge number of fields on it because you're trying to keep everyone happy, or you have a very short form that doesn't have all the information you need and you don't get the benefit of all the reporting that you could do and all the other good stuff. So without going into the details of the slide, which we'll cover in a few minutes, harmonization really involves making, looking across the process. So for example, if you're implementing a corrective action system in an organization that has 10 different divisions, you, what you do is you put, you have everyone put their forms on the table and say, let's look at all these forms and look at the common elements. What are the common things? There's a description of the problem, there's probably a common category, there's probably a problem, uh, the department where the problem occurred, the location, uh, all the details that you would think. And, and if you think about it, you might have 80% of the form that's common across the entire organization, but people don't necessarily realize that. There are two main challenges that we, that we identify in, in, in implementing a system in a global environment, or implementing a corrective action management, or any other type of system. The first one is getting the local buyer, which I already sort of discussed. The second huge challenge is reporting. So if you think about management review reporting or any kind of management reports, when you sit down to compile the data for those reports, oftentimes it takes weeks if not longer to pull data from disparate sources because each organization or group is doing it their own way. So you have experts on Excel that sit down and sometimes that's their full-time job. We, we've had customers that had people that have had Excel spreadsheets as their full-time job, basically taking data from reports, compiling it into something that makes sense, presenting it to management. And by the time the reports get presented to management, it's historical data because other things have happened in the meantime. So when you're looking at a, a harmonized system, you're, you're looking across the whole platform to see where elements make sense and try to share those common elements while allowing for nuances of differences for different departments or locations or business units that might have specific requirements. So if you do it in that fashion, what ends up happening is you, the corporate requirements are met because of the fact that 80% of the form is the same. For everybody. You can do very quick and easy reporting because they're all using the same fields. No matter what, what, what other system, if you're using Excel or Access or whatever, whatever you're using to do this, they're all using the same fields, so you don't have to compile the numbers from all these different sources because they're all in the same place. And the locations are getting the requirements met because of the fact that 20% the, the of the form may be unique to that particular location or the business unit or whatever it might be. So that's that, that's the, really kind of the, the crux of the definition of harmonization. So where it makes sense, try to share common elements, and we'll discuss uh, we'll discuss some more of the details as we go through the presentation. We have local differences. We have uh, product variety it introduces technical differences, mergers and acquisitions. That's a big one because oftentimes organizations that were formed by acquisition have a very different way of doing things when they try to assimilate another location or division or business unit into their process. So, uh, so that's really the uh, sort of the pressures and the sort of the challenges that you face. Also, it, there's specialization of business systems. You have customized homegrown solutions in many situations. You have the not invented here syndrome, where there, there's a political uh, aspect to it. Organizations felt that they, if they were, let's say, they were acquired by another organization, well, they created their system. They took a lot of time to create what they do. 
So why should we do something else now? Uh, so harmonization can help because it eliminates differences and inconsistencies across those different processes. It promotes best practices while recognizing differences, and also it identifies shared data to build an enterprise view of compliance. In other words, reports allow you to generate, uh, you can generate these reports instantaneously, basically, because everyone's using the same field for the same thing. So as I mentioned, we, we make the distinction between harmonization and standardization. It's difficult to create a uniform business process across all the divisions, because every division has a slightly different set of requirements, slightly different set of requirements. What are some reasons? Well, first of all, is it even possible? It's a huge effort, there's a huge change involved, and we talked earlier about change management. It's, you have to have top-down commitment to do this. Your the upper management has to agree that harmonization is the way to go. Now, oftentimes, if they see the reports that are able to be produced within a short time, they'll, they'll pretty much jump on board once they realize that. Uh, also, oftentimes, you'll have to do a powerful ROI justification in the cost savings for, for better compliance. Also, it helps control complexity. Business systems need to talk. So you have information silos. There's a big uh, integration aspect of it. You have multiple systems that have different information. Putting them all together and interact, allowing them to interact with each other allows for a huge um, reduction in complexity and also allows for harmonization. It also it, it delivers better value. If, there's a faster response to changes, also faster assimilation of new businesses. If you have an established harmonization process, because you can accommodate for the, the, uh, the differences, but allow you to focus on the, the harmonized elements that are the same. And also, there's a consolidated view of compliance. Once, there's, once you have a harmonized system, the reporting is consistent, it's extremely easy to get information out of the system, it doesn't take that long to create reports, because in these disparate systems without harmonization, where you make everybody just does their own thing. And we've seen it over and over again. Organizations struggle with management model reporting for that purpose. So a lot of time and resources is spent on generating those re reports, and it's the same effort every single time. Because they're just pulling the same reports together with different information, more updated information. Um, so people literally become experts in Microsoft Excel as a result. So there's some also some challenges to harmonization. How different are the processes? Are the business requirements? They're not the same as, as compliance requirements. Oftentimes, unique differentiated business processes give you a competitive advantage. So organizations have the ability to generate specific products in a specific area or location or business unit. So they want to, it's kind of a differentiator. But also, um, by the same token, if you're looking at unique processes, that might be considered a non-compliance if you're looking at harmonizing or, or standardizing a system. So it's difficult to unlink business systems from compliance systems. Another challenge, of course, is harmonization, is, uh, excuse me, integration with other systems. Because if you're looking to harmonize everything, you'll oftentimes have multiple systems that are all talking to each other, but it leads to the end result, which is a harmonized compliance across the board. You, and you'll have to rely on the IT support to do that. Oftentimes, um, the bottleneck is with IT is that there's always something on the computer, a limited set of resources available to do what they do. So therefore, when you put in a request, it just sits in the queue of other things that they've already got to do. So it's, it, IT is, is uh, necessary, of course, and they're also very important when you're talking about a change management process across a large enterprise, because somebody has to coordinate the efforts unless you're fortunate enough to have a corporate quality person that sort of leans toward the IT side where uh, they understand the business processes. They're kind of a, um, a broker, if you will, between the business units and the, and the IT department. It's also really responsible for managing the system. And it also, when you have a harmonized system, of course, it provides a, bot, a, a consistent worldwide user experience. So there are four key elements to a harmonization effort. The people side are the champions that drive the process. Uh, they have to find common areas, as I mentioned before. Everyone throws their form on the table and they look at all the common elements of the form. They have to oversee the process. They have to perform site-level audits to them as a means of verifying or uh, compliance with the process. The processes themselves, they have to satisfy corporate reporting and assimilate site-level practices, which is difficult, but it can be done. 
It has to be repeatable. Uh, good harmonization will be repeatable across multiple processes. It has to be adaptable as well. So the changes can occur. You can tweak it as you go while still maintaining common practices. You have a standard process, one method of conducting the new processes to ensure that there are no future deviations. So there even has to be a process in place to assimilate new processes that you're getting in the process. And I'm trying to use the word processing as many times as I can in one sentence. <laughs> in addition, of course, it has to be audible. So we have to ensure consistent accuracy and effectiveness. I'm thinking of something I think that this would really relate to, so something like OEE operational equipment effectiveness, which is a measure of a plant mm -hmm. facilities operation ability in business. And not every site can use exactly the same formulas and, and features to figure out that OEE calculation. But it can be harmonized so that they're somewhat somewhat standard, but they will be exactly the same. The methodology for reporting might be the same, although there may be differences in specific calculations. Correct. That's exactly right. Also, the place to keep the, the, the data could be fine. True. Now, do these, do these systems integrate with other systems, too, for uh, manufacturing processes? Yeah. So that would be sort of the common area. Would be the, the center, the, the place that all the data goes would be the harmonization part. Okay. Also, the technology side. Um, it, it's needed to effectively bring together complex processes, allows you to segregate site level data. So in some, in some systems you're, you can actually log in and see only the data that's, that's relative to you, even though the data is all there, but you can only see it based on your location, department level, and the hierarchy, whatever it might be within the organization. Uh, it allows you to maintain common administration. You literally have one, the, the, the best case scenario is to have a system that has one set of data for everybody. So you can access it from around the enterprise, globally, web based, whatever it might be. But then it's one set of data, so it maintains. There's no multiple administration. You know, things like managing the system are are all in one place. It also allows you to, and I've, I've discussed this several times, the role of the global data. The ability to do instantaneous reporting for managers that are at the appropriate level. So upper level managers can look at the data that everybody has, whereas somebody that's in, uh, let's say. North America can only see the North, North American stuff, and somebody in Asia Pacific can only see the Asia Pacific stuff. But it's all in the same place because of harmonization. You've got the same problem category fields you follow up on the example we started before. The same description of the problem, the same department, the same date for the event, whatever it might have been. You can do more reporting in that fashion. Also, it allows you to manage governance to, uh, to define things like keywords and assign roles. You maintain your site level adherence to the corporate standard. You're facilitating continuous improvement to standardization, as well as initiating management of change to the harmonized system. So we talked about change management earlier. Uh, if, if you're using a harmonized system and you want to modify something, the first thing you have to do is, do, through the change process, evaluate the impact of that change on the users. So that's almost a, I'm not going to say a disadvantage of it, but some people, that use the system at a local level can do anything they want with the system. They get up one day and they say, well, I want to have a new field for this. I want to modify this process. I want to do this. And it doesn't matter. They can certainly do that. The problem with that, it, well, there is no problem with that. But if you look at then that group becoming part of a global rollout of the same system, then they have, it's a whole different ballgame because the field that they used to have complete control over now affects thousands of other users in different locations. So there has to be a change management process in place. It's not to say that they can't make the change, but it's just that you have to evaluate that change and the impact of that as it affects other people. So technology enablers. You, you, of course, when you use best practices, you've already got best practices. So why not start with proven models that you already have? So the correct action process is a good example of there's a, there's a best practice that most people use the AD process might be common to most people's correct action systems, even though there may be slight nuances. So in a harmonized system, of course, you, want to, you don't want to reinvent the wheel. You want to start with best practices. Um, most organizations have been doing things for years anyway. So you, you would certainly want to at least start with your best practice and then evaluate from an harmonization perspective which elements can be common across the board and which ones should be unique. You also want to have uh, flexibility. We talked about 80%. 
you have the same, the common 80% but have a unique 20% that might be unique to individual business units or locations or departments. And then a centralized system that can be scaled across the enterprise. You have decentralized access. It's one system, but everybody accesses the system. And you can also delegate certain administrative tasks. So some things in a system that affect just one location can be decentralized. Other ones have to be centralized. And uh, from a corporate governance perspective, you want to make sure that users are using the same values for the same things. For example, keywords and things like that. So keywords are one of the sources of garbage data. Because oftentimes people say, well, this keyword doesn't exist in our system, we'll create a new one. You know, another one that's very similar already does. So they don't realize that this location has the keyword that means the same thing as this one, but they're slightly different. So that's where the Excel exercise comes in. And that's where they get to use those, those little function formulas to change things, find this, replace it with this, make it the same thing. So that, that's the, the idea of corporate governance and ensuring that the, the same keywords are used for the same things. Also, enterprise scalability. So in a harmonization effort, you want to be able to scale the system so it can effectively segregate data. You can control access and filter views and things like that. Filter people's access based on their location. And, and uh, you, you can do this in, in multiple different types of systems and allow people to access things um, that are only pertinent to their local uh, requirements. So sometimes, from some organizations have security requirements where they don't want to allow access to people across the board. But other organizations want to be able to have their users feel like they're still operating in their own pipe, if you will, their own location. And you can set certain systems up to do that where it doesn't feel like they're um, just, they don't have access to all the, all the global data that's going on within the organization. So you're, you're filtering things, you're looking at corporate documents. An example of this kind of filtering might be my location and lower. So in the, in, you, can, you can define your organization's hierarchy. So you have the corporate level, then you have, might have continents under that, and then have countries under that, and then have specific cities under that as locations. And then you have somebody at a particular location that's looking at a corporate document. You can have a corporate document associated with this, the, the top level of, of the organization that anybody can see. But then you might have work instructions that only location A can see, and they can still see the corporate document. And location Z can still see just their work instructions, and then also the same corporate document. So talk about managing complexity. You have one document for the same purpose across the entire enterprise. And that document has its own change control, of course. And you don't have to manage multiple of the same kind of documents across. I'm not sure that there are many organizations, we've seen it ourselves, where the corrective action procedure is the same across the whole organization, but they have 10 of them. Because each person or each group manages their own thing. You also have uh, record level security, so you can define who has access to certain individual records. If it's if it's information that's proprietary or um, legal documents or things like that that some parts of the organization can't see. Oftentimes, you're talking maybe reporting injuries and illnesses. There's some things that are that are us that are protected by laws or HIPAA laws that you can't share information on employees and things like that with other people. So you can hide information like that as well. And you can also delegate administration control as well. So I've already sort of discussed that, that concept. I also mentioned that integration is important for harmonization. We can uh, use different services, and I'm not going to get into the technical details. But when you have multiple systems, there are different things that allow the databases to speak with each other. You can configure interfaces. You can, using XML, push data, API, push and pull data. And then normalizing information from different sources. So just take the word ETQ out of the middle and just use it any form in any system. And if you have a corrective action form, let's say, and one of the, one of the things that we've seen is that people have their own ERP systems, even if you know, in a large organization. Different locations might have different ERP systems that accomplish the same task, but they're very different systems. And what we've seen happen is, even though you have different sources, that have different supplier lists, you might have all the supplier lists go into one form, like a corrective action form. So when you're raising a corrective action against a supplier or a SCAR, even though it's coming from different systems, location A may look up the supplier from this system, location B may look up the supplier from their own system, but after it's all said and done, you have all the supplier suppliers of respective corrective actions in one place, so you can do reporting on them. You can also push information out 
So you can export information from a system, uh, an electronic form that you might have, and push that information into other systems that, are, that might be very different at different locations. So the, the harmonized system becomes sort of the interpreter and also the common voice for all the information that then gets pulled from different sources and pushed to different sources. So a situation, um, just a couple of case studies to talk about our own experience, is in decentralized administration where we had a, a system where you had a common design rolled out to 35, over 35 countries. And you had local control for things like access assignments and notifications. So it's a common corrective action process. It's one form for everybody. But the locations and the administrators at the individual location level are allowed to control who's responsible for a different set of the process that they're allowed to build into the system. They don't have to go to the centralized person to do that. Because the centralized group defines the overall process, what the steps are. But then the individual locations have the ability of going in and defining on a case-by-case -case basis who's responsible for assignments, notifications, what are the keywords for this particular location. So it would be, it would be an arduous task for one person to manage that, all that stuff. If it makes sense, allowed for the decentralization of that particular um, aspect of the setup of, of the given system that you're using. Also, location-based security. We have a, a customer that has a single module rolled out across a thousand sites in a seven-level hierarchy. We discussed the whole thing with the, the corporate the continents and the countries, etc. And what they can do is they can allow their users to log in and they can see the reports and charts that are automatically filtered based on the, the uh, user's location. So the North American manager can log in and see the corrective action status for all the corrective actions in North America, whereas the Asia Pacific manager can look at the same set of reports, but the system might be automatically filtering that information to allow them to see what they're looking for. Workflow is the process that the form might go through. So you might have a single workflow with a single set of roles, but then all the locations and all the notifications and assignments are based on specific locations. So you can also do things like that with a globally harmonized system. So there's some benefits to a harmonized system. Um, we already sort of touched on some, but I'd like to just go through this list to sort of solidify the concept. You can reduce the number of change requests because of the fact that everyone's using the same form. So you don't have seven separate corrective action forms that are going through similar processes. You actually have one corrective action form that's going through a harmonized process. You can also reduce the cost of making changes because it's a lot easier to make changes. It reduces the cost of support because you have one system and one process that you're managing. You can also reduce the cost of system administration for the very same reasons. You can increase compliance with established processes. You can also increase the speed of rollout to new divisions because you've already got a harmonized process. You already have a process, as we discussed before, to assimilate new processes into your process. Once again, I'm just never process way too many times. Um, so that's that's the idea. It also increases visibility across the enterprise because everyone's using the same established process. And it increases response time to changes and increases knowledge sharing across the enterprise. Of course, the key the key benefit is this reporting capability, which is really huge. Oh wow, so, okay. So that's, a, that's my presentation. <laughs>